Okay, we're going to do a little bit of machines review dealing with simple machines. Recall that there are several types of simple machines including levers and pulleys and wheel and axle uh, pulleys and wedges and things like that. Uh, we're going to focus probably on a wheel and axle pulley just as kind of our random one to pick. I'm going to come over here and just draw a real straightforward little wheel and axle pulley. I'm going to have the object that we're lifting be just some sort of box here something like that that's just kind of tied that we're trying to lift I'm showing it off to the side but really you know that it would probably be getting lifted straight up as soon as it moves over we're gonna have an individual over on this side that is pulling this particular rope here they are on the effort side of things recall that that is our normal way to describe the side that you are on is the effort side. That's what the E is for in all of these little equations up here. The other side of things is the resistance side. Resistance side of things and that's what the R is for in those equations. Over when you look at efficiency in the top right corner is work out over work in. That's what the, the O and the I stand for. And of course we have mechanical advantage and ideal mechanical advantage. Let's start off this problem by just giving some initial information. Let's say that this is a 100 kilogram box that I am trying to lift. And we're going to say that I need to lift it a height over here of uh, 2 meters. But as I'm using my wheel and axle pulley, I note that I actually have to pull in significantly more rope than that. In fact, I have to pull in uh, 20 so the displacement of the rope over here that I pull in, I pull in 20 meters of rope and when I'm doing my pulling I have to use a force that is equal to 120 newtons. Let's go ahead and start by just calculating some of the basics of this particular machine. First, let's look at the ideal mechanical advantage recalling that this is telling uh, me what sort of multiplier could I potentially get on my force but it looks at the, the difference in displacements, the ratio of displacements. So this is a function of the pulley. And in a wheel and axle pulley, it's actually a function of the, the two different radii that the ropes are going to go into. So here's the resistance side of things, and this is the effort wheel over here. And so the radius of those things is actually what's going to decide it. So it is a property of the pulley system itself. All right. Looking at the IMA, the ideal mechanical advantage for this particular pulley system would be the effort displacement divided by the resistance displacement. Well, my effort displacement is 20 meters. That's what I have to pull in. The resistance displacement, the box is actually going to go up 2 meters, meaning that my ideal mechanical advantage is a nice round number of 10. Again, that is a unitless number because my units were canceled over there. So my ideal mechanical advantage is 10. Well, what do I actually get out of this machine? What is the advantage I can actually realize? And that is the mechanical advantage, which is more interested in the forces associated with things. I need the FR. Notice that over here I gave us a mass of things. I gave us kilograms. That's not a force. I need to take 100 kilograms, and I need to multiply it by 9.8 meters per second squared in order to find out what the weight of that box is that we're having to actually pull with. And then I had to pull with 120 newtons. That was my effort force. I'll remind you whenever we're doing these types of problems we are assuming that things are moving at a constant velocity. That way we don't need to take into account any of the complexities that come up with accelerating objects. So moving at constant velocity up here, I'm going to have uh, 980 newtons divided by 120 newtons. That means that my mechanical advantage is going to be 8.16 repeated. That's also a unitless number. That is my real life mechanical advantage that I could get out of this particular machine. You always have to overcome friction in machines, and so we are looking at that real-life result right now. 
So I should, in an ideal world, I should be able to get an advantage of 10. That means it should effectively be able to multiply any force that I put on the effort side of things by a factor of 10. So in a perfect world, if I pulled with 120, I ought to be able to pull over here with, on this side of things with 1,200 newtons. But I just don't actually ever achieve that much of a multiplier. My multiplier is less right now. What I got out was 900 in 80 newtons worth of valuable force by putting in 120 newtons. So there's my actual mechanical advantage. What is the efficiency of this machine? Well, we can pretty easily just say the MA over the IMA tells me the efficiency. So that's going to be 8.16 repeated over 10, which means that I'm looking at 0.816 or approximately 81.6%. Given that these numbers are actually functions of the machine, they have to do with the design of the machine and how much friction there is, I'm going to come over and I'm going to write down these numbers in the corner here. The reason why I want to have these numbers in the corner is because now I want to look at some sort of extension concepts. So now what we're going to do is we're going to have some sort of compound machine. Over here I still have the effort side. Over here I still have the resistance side. Not sure why I just put a question mark there. Um, but I'm going to have some sort of compound machine that's going to be able to do a task for me. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say that I'm lifting an elephant over here. We'll give him a little trunk, a little tail. And I'm going to be over here. And I want to know how many machines do I need to hook up up here. So right now I'm showing n equals 3. But that's just for my picture. Let's say that this is a black box. I don't actually know how many I'm going to need. I want to know how many machines do I need to put together to make a compound machine in order to lift this elephant. I need to go ahead and provide for us some numbers. We're going to go ahead and say that my maximum pull force is still only going to be 120 newtons. That's my max pull force. Over here, I need to provide the mass of the elephant. Not sure how much of an elephant actually weighs. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say it's 10,000 kilograms. I have a hunch that might be a little big, but it's a nice number. And then we'll just go ahead and give ourselves a task here that we're going to see if we can raise this elephant one meter. We'll come in in just a moment here and figure out how much rope I'll need to actually pull in. All right. <clears throat> so the question is, how many machines do I need to put together so that I can actually lift this elephant? The first thing we should probably do is we need to figure out the force of the elephant over here. So again, I gave us a mass. I need to multiply that by 9.8. So the elephant actually has a weight, an FG, of 98000 newtons. But I just want to reinforce that you need to be paying attention to that over there. Let's see what sort of mechanical advantage I need. So I'm going to put in the mechanical advantage that I need over here to be able to do this task is still going to be equal to the FR over the FE. My resistance side of things is 98,000 newtons. And my maximum effort force is 120 newtons. My MA that I need is going to be 817. If I have a mechanical advantage of 817, that will be enough of a multiplier for me to be able to go ahead and do this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to recall that for a compound machine over here, I can actually figure out what the mechanical advantage of a compound machine would be by multiplying the mechanical advantage of this machine by the mechanical advantage of that machine by the mechanical advantage of that machine those simple machines. Multiply the component machine advantages together to figure out what the compound machine will look like. And so if we're going to make an assumption that each of these simple machines is identical, which I would like to make in this problem, that means that I can say the mechanical advantage of a compound machine is going to be equal to the mechanical advantage of the individual component machine raised to n the number of machines. Now I want to solve for n in this particular scenario. And in fact, I need to make sure that I just have enough mechanical advantage. I need 817 as my mechanical advantage for that compound machine. 
I need to make sure that when I put in my individual mechanical advantage that I wrote down here as 8.17 and I raise that to the power of n, I just need to make sure that I get a number that is actually greater than 817. If n is equal to 1, well then I only have my original machine here, so I wouldn't be able to do that. If n is equal to 2, well then I would get 8.17 squared, which is 66.75, not enough. Well, what if I use 3? 8.17 raised to the power of 3 is 545, still not enough. That means that 4 is probably going to be my number. So 8.17 raised to the fourth power is going to be equal to 4,455. That is plenty of mechanical advantage to be able to lift this particular elephant. Certainly, if you're familiar with logarithm math, you don't need to go through that guess and check process. You can solve for n up in the exponent here using some logs, and then you can just round that number up so that you get yourself a full machine. I'm going to carry this information down here and I'm going to say that we use four machines for our compound machine. And let's figure out some information. Okay, so I rewrote the mechanical advantage of our compound machine. What would be the ideal mechanical advantage of that compound machine? Compound machine theory says that I can just take the ideal, excuse me, ideal mechanical advantage of the individual machines and I can also raise it to the power of 4 in this case for the number of machines. Remember my picture does not indicate that. I go down here and I find that my ideal mechanical advantage was 10 raised to the power of 4. My ideal mechanical advantage of my compound machine is going to be 10,000. The efficiency can work in the same way. So the efficiency I can either take, looking down here, point 817, raise it to the fourth power, or I can just take my 4455 5 divided by 10,000. That's my MA over my IMA. And I can find that the efficiency here is equal to 0 0.4455 or 44.6%. So certainly my machine gets less efficient. The last little thing that I would like to do here is I would like to just point out that we only needed an ideal mechanical advantage of 817, but we are actually sitting on a machine that has significantly more than that. Because the, the weight of the elephant isn't going to change over here, that means that the thing that's got to give a little bit, that's got to compensate for the fact that I now have a really good machine, is that I'm not going to have to pull with my full pull force. So let's go ahead and calculate how much I would have to pull with. What force would I actually have to pull? To do that, I'm just going to say 4455, five, that's the mechanical advantage of my compound machine, is equal to the FR is not changing because it's still the same elephant that's sitting over there. So that's going to be 98,000 newtons. And now I'm going to solve for the FE. This is going to be a number that's less than 120. I'm going to find that I don't need to pull with as much force. When I do this, I find that I actually only need to pull with about 22 newtons of force. So I actually luck out and I'm able to save myself quite a bit here. Well, how much rope am I going to have to pull in if my goal is to raise the elephant one meter? Remember, the IMA is the thing that deals with the displacements. The resistance side of things is one meter. That's what we just had there. And I know my IMA for the compound machine was 10,000. So I have 10,000 is equal to the effort displacement divided by the resistance displacement was one meter. I multiply this over and I find that my effort displacement would have to be 10,000 meters of rope, 10 kilometers of rope. Uh, probably not a task that I'm willing to actually try to do here, so maybe I don't want to lift my elephant. Hopefully, though, the math makes sense to you and you understand a little bit how to, about how to use machines here. As always, if it makes sense for you, let your computer know.